Hey, this is Eric over at Techno RV, and in this video, I want to talk to you about why you may want to consider a PepWave cellular embedded router for your mobile internet needs. So with a cellular embedded router, this means that you are going to supply the data plan, the SIM card with the data plan on it. That's what will go into these uh, routers, and then the router is going to do the rest. And by the rest, that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video because they are quite amazing, the things that these things can do to give you a better uh, internet experience while you're out on the road. As it relates to data plans, we don't sell data plans. Uh, we highly recommend that you go to the Mobile Internet Resource Center online. Uh, that group has tremendous uh, accurate information on the best data plans that are available out there right now. And uh, I use that all the time as a resource, and I would recommend that you do the same. Now, I have videos uh, separate from this one because this is more just an overview, but each individual PepWave device we have videos on them, and they all have little variations uh, that may uh, one may appeal to you more than another and we will be certain to make sure that you are clear and understand each one of those devices while you make your purchasing decision if that's the route that you decide to go so let's get into the specifics of why you might want to consider a pepwave cellular router over say uh, like a jetpack uh, these type devices they're just cellular uh, hot spots that you can get from uh, your local cellular store. We've used these for, for a lot of years, and it's really a night and day difference between uh, a cellular router like a PepWave and using a hotspot. And I really just want to talk about those differences. So the first thing I want to talk about is, is security, because I know that's important to all of us that our information that we're transmitting uh, across the internet is completely secure and PepWave 100% has this wrapped up. So PepWave uses uh, VPN technology. And basically the way this works is it, it divides your transmission up into smaller pieces. Uh, so there's really no single piece of information that is even usable to an attacker. Then the device codes these small pieces into to military grade 256 uh, bit encryption. So any data that ever leaves your PepWave device is going to be in these smaller pieces and encoded uh, with this military grade encryption. So if you're worried about security, maybe you work for a company and they require a certain level of encryption for you to even be on their server or something like that then the pep wave is going to have have you covered and then even if you're you know you're not working you're just retired and you you're, you're worried about maybe going to your banking accounts and things like that doing this through a pep wave router is uh, going to be the securest way that you could do that the next thing that i want to talk about is just the strength of uh, one of these pep wave cellular routers and right out of the gate they're going to have stronger transmitters and stronger antennas than your standard uh, hotspots here. So in order to complete a transmission, uh, you need a transmitter to send information out. You need an antenna to hear that information coming back. And just by having uh, stronger transmitters and antennas, you're going to get better throughput speeds. And it will be something that is, is quite noticeable. So that's the one thing. The other thing is uh, these are have built-in MIMO antennas, so MIMO meaning multiple in, multiple out, as opposed to a device that, that just has a single antenna. So let's think about this for a little bit. So let's say you just have a single antenna that's trying to communicate uh, with a tower. So that single antenna is going, going to be trying to get its signal through maybe trees, maybe you're in a valley, maybe there's buildings around, all sorts of things that it's struggling with. Whenever you start implementing more antennas, it can reduce the errors that occur 
uh, whenever you are whenever you have these type of problems uh, uh, of interference. So by having multiple antennas, it reduces those errors, and by reducing those errors, it will increase uh, your your transmission speed. So the next thing I want to talk about is something called carrier aggregation, and uh, this I want to, I want to try and simplify this because this is an ingredient uh, of of this process with these routers that provides faster speeds for you. So carrier aggregation is basically the ability for your device to combine multiple frequency bands together in order to give you uh, faster throughput. So let's just take a quick example here. You've got uh, different category levels, CAT4, CAT6, uh, CAT 12, CAT 18. A CAT 4 modem can only connect to one frequency band. A CAT 6 can connect to two frequency bands to, together, combining them. Uh, CAT 12 is three, and then there's CAT 18 now that can combine up to five. Let's just imagine you're on a Verizon network, and this particular uh, network that you're on, there, there are six frequency bands available. And if you only have a CAT4 modem, you're only going to be able to, to connect to one. If you have a CAT6, now you can pull two of those frequency bands. The PEP wave combines them together to give you more speeds. So just imagine these uh, frequency bands like they're just stores out there that you can go shopping in, right? Wouldn't it be nice to be able to go shopping in the stores that are less crowded? Because a lot of times if you only ha or have access to one band, a lot of times you will auto connect to what's considered like the most popular band, but that's also the one that's the most crowded, right? So not necessarily a good thing. So you could be on Verizon having a poor experience switch bands, all of a sudden have a great experience, but you're still on Verizon, but you changed bands. So by being able to, to combine these multiple frequency bands, it allows you to have access to more bands, of course, and to have better odds of not being on a band that is overloaded. That's carrier aggregation. We do not even sell a CAT4 modem because that's a uh, single frequency band only. And I just really don't see the point in that. I consider that just older technology. We start at CAT6 that starts at two, two times carrier aggregation. Uh, the next thing, let's move on, is that these cellular routers do have what's called Wi-Fi as WAN. Basically what this means, it'll, it will allow you to connect to uh, public access points, like the Wi-Fi at, at campground. It also has stronger antennas and stronger transmitters, like I mentioned to you, which in essence makes it a Wi-Fi booster, okay? So a Wi-Fi booster is simply increasing your transmitter power and your antenna power over what, say, you could already get from, like, your cell phone through Wi-Fi. So if you increase that power, you're boosting it, and therefore you're Wi-Fi boosting. This has the ability to do that, to connect to campground Wi-Fi. So that's just another option that you can have there. Another thing I wanted to point out just real quick before we get into more performance type uh, issues is these things are built like a tank, like industrial grade. And they are certified to certain shock proof and vibration proof levels because a lot of industry uses these type devices and we're just getting the advantage of it right in the RV industry although I must say uh, banging down the road in an RV can create uh, quite a lot of, of uh, shock and vibration if you know what I mean there so these I'm just gonna make that real short these things are built very well metal housing and they're just certified to handle the abuse another thing that these devices have the ab ability to do is uh, it does have GPS. I don't suspect many people are going to use this because basically what it's doing is it's basically just tracking where this device is. So you don't have to connect that uh, when you get one of these devices if you don't want to use it. Uh, but if you do, it's available. And so you can, in the control uh, panel, it'll hold information for a certain period of time and you can go back and look. Maybe if you had a question about where you were at or something, then it could do that. I suppose if somebody... Um, stole your RV, 
then having the GPS turned on might be a good idea, right? So it does have that ability if that's something that you're interested in. The next thing I want to talk about is something called load balancing that these devices have. And this is going to be very useful if you have multiple users on one device. So, I don't know, maybe it's you and one other person, or maybe you got uh, three, four kids that are all connecting to the same device. It's highly unlikely that the bandwidth needs for all these different people would be the same. So, load balancing takes care of this problem for you by evaluating what the demands are from the different people uh, consuming the bandwidth and it appropriates it properly based on those consumption needs. It uses uh, eight different algorithms to accomplish this. It's all going on in the background and what you will see is a user, whether you're uh, on a Zoom call or gaming or just sending an email, you will just see that you have the bandwidth appropriate to take care of that function. The next thing I want to talk about with this is something called failover. All of these devices come with a failover. And what that means is if you have access to different methods of obtaining the internet, so you're going to have a, a cellular card in here. Some of these devices have dual modems. You can actually have uh, two cellular plans in it. And so what failover is, is that if the particular method that you're accessing the internet, say it's a Verizon cellular card, let's say that goes out for some reason, uh, then it has the ability to automatically fail over to one of the other methods that you have access, whether that be internet or another cellular card. Now, the, the failover that you get just right out of the box is not necessarily instant, right? So maybe you're watching a movie and your cellular provider goes out uh, and, then, and then your movie freezes, right? Uh, if you have a, a dual modem, and I'm, I'm getting a little bit in the weeds here, but if you have a dual modem with two actual uh, cellular cards in them, then if it were to freeze on one, then you could just click refresh and it would automatically just kick in using the other one. If you have a single cellular modem, uh, then that process may take a little bit more time, like maybe a minute or so. So your, your screen freezes up, uh, it's going to automatically start working to move you to the next one, but it may take a minute or so for it to do that. So the last thing I want to talk about here is something called Speed Fusion. And, uh, and this is basically a service with the uh, PepWave products that you can activate when you get your device. And again, once you sort of go through and choose your particular device, there will be more detailed information about all this as it relates to each device. Speed Fusion is what I'll just call three services. There is hot failover, there's something called WAN smoothing, and there's something called bonding. Hot failover, since we just talked about failover, I'll just talk about that. Hot failover means that if you have that activated and you say you're on a dual modem PEP wave uh, or you have, you're connected to campground Wi-Fi or whatever. In other words, you have multiple sources to the internet that you have access to within one device. Hot failover, if your connection breaks, it's instantly going to connect you to another source. And there will be no break in whatever you're doing. So for those of you that work out there, you're on a Zoom call, like your boss is on the line and you're presenting to like 30 people or something, like you can't be having internet problems, right? Hot failover is spectacular for this because it happens in an instant so fast that it will not break the connection. It's called, it's called PepWave's just unbreakable connection, this hot failover. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about is something called WAN smoothing. What WAN smoothing is, and again, this is having a PepWave device that, that has access to, say, cellular. Maybe you're connected to Wi-Fi. Maybe you have two cellular cards in it. What, it, what WAN smoothing is, is that when you send a request out to the Internet, like maybe you're just going to start a movie or you're going to start a Zoom call or whatever, 
it'll send packets out to all of those different methods that you have built into it. So again, it could be, if you have a dual modem, it could be both of those sending packets out to say a Verizon and an AT&T, and then maybe you're connected to campground Wi-Fi. Uh, maybe somehow you, you, you're at a friend's house and you have a hard line uh, ethernet connection in your WAN port. All these things are going on, right? So it sends packets out to all of, all of those. And the easiest way that I can explain this is that whichever one performs the best at that moment, that's the one getting the job, okay? But it doesn't stop there. Let's say you're on a 30 minute uh, Zoom call. It continuously is doing this. So throughout that call, you could be using a little bit of data from your Verizon, a little bit of data from maybe an AT&T that you have in your, in your modem. Uh, so it's not like, hey, it chooses one at the start of it, and then it just stops there. All this is going on in the background, and it is spectacular, especially for those that are working from the road and are looking for that sort of, again, that unbreakable high-performance connection. The other thing that you get with Speed Fusion, that, that uh, third service, is something called bonding. And what bonding is, is it's going to take all of your available resources to access the internet. Again, that could be uh, in a dual modem, it could be multiple cellular cards. Maybe you're connected to uh, campground Wi-Fi. Basically what bonding is doing is it is fusing together all of those different services into one pipeline coming back to you to increase your bandwidth speed, right? So bonding is an incredible uh, piece of technology that, that PepWave has, and you will see a difference with that again. You know, everybody's different. You know that, like, if that sounds appealing to you and you have something going on with how you need internet on the road, if, like, that would be helpful. But having access to multiple carriers, Wi-Fi, fusing them together to increase your bandwidth, that is what bonding is, and it is a spectacular addition to that, uh, that speed fusion. I want to talk briefly about antennas. All of these devices that we have have uh, built-in antenna ports on them, and, uh, and the units come with screw-on type antennas. And so uh, you could uh, increase your gain with those antennas. We also have external antennas, and I'm not going to get into the details here other than to say that the inside antennas work great and outside antennas even better, right? When you go and look at our videos on our individual units that we have, we have specific antennas that we are recommending for the particular device that you may be interested in, uh, the recommended outside antenna. And if you want to pick that up, then you'll just see the recommendation there on the, on the product. Okay, so that is the overview on why you may want to consider a PepWave cellular embedded router. We've been using one for quite a while now, and it's made a big difference for us on the road. We stock all this at Techno RV. We want to make sure you're educated on all of these products while you're making your decisions. So by all means, chat, email, call us. We're happy to help. And again, well, once you buy from us, you are going to get the Techno RV Learning Series like you get with most of our products to where we've made videos, we have written instructions, and uh, anything we can do to help you be successful, we want to do it.